Auckland, New Zealand, Antipode, Seville, Spain. Auckland is a diverse, multicultural cosmopolitan city, home to the largest Polynesian population in the world. The rural population is some 1,467,000. It is the largest city in New Zealand. In total, 59.3% of Aucklanders identify as European, 23.1% as Asian, 14.6% as Pacific, 107 as Maori. As such, English is the main language spoken, but other Asian and Polynesian languages are also common. It is not a particularly religious place. 37.8% of the population consider themselves irreligious. The typical salary of someone successfully employed is a health 108,000 New Zealand dollars and life expectancy in the country is a decent 81.6 years. Auckland is the sort of city you often see ranking somewhere near the top when it comes to cities with a high quality of life. Its biggest problems are a high cost of living with monthly rents around 1900 New Zealand dollars or about 1300 US dollars. Crime rate, according to self-reported statistics on Numbeo, is moderate and has seen an increase, but this is possibly just the perception of the public because of negative media coverage. The city reported zero COVID-19 deaths thanks to the country's early lockdown strategy and swift government action. It is expected that the population of the city is going to grow by 50% over the next 50 years, which is sure to make the housing strain much worse. There's also a bit of traffic here and there. Ignoring the usual problems all large metropolitan cities experience, it is a reasonably good place to live. 19,933 kilometers away is its antipode. Seville is the capital and the largest city of Andalusia, in the southwest of the Iberian Peninsula. Seville's current population is estimated to be around 700,000 people making it the fourth largest city in Spain. Its air is thick with history of the Spanish Empire. The citizens of modern-day Seville are overwhelmingly ethnic Spaniards, leaving little room for diversity or languages other than Spanish. Even though religion has played such a major role in the history of the country, for modern Spaniards it now plays a far smaller role. Most people identify as either Roman Catholics or are non-religious. As such, most Spaniards do not practice regularly in religious worship, though religious presence is significantly higher compared to Auckland. Gross median salary of well-employed workers is around 40,000 euro, a difference of about 33% from its antipode. But life expectancy is a good bit longer at 83.1 years. Seville really is the kind of city that you envision when thinking of traveling to Spain, with all the cultural perks and the more laid-back lifestyle that likely contributes to the extended lifespan of its inhabitants. But someone moving there from a different culture would have a tough time fitting in. Easily the biggest problem facing Seville and Spain in general is its huge unemployment rate. In southern Spain in particular, the rate is over 20% and those are pre-coronavirus figures. As of this moment, there are 2,422 confirmed deaths in Seville from COVID-19. The people living here also have to contend with scorching high temperatures that reach well into the 40s during midsummer. In August 2003, Seville recorded 52 Celsius. To generalize, Seville is a place with a far deeper and richer culture and a more homogeneous society than Auckland, but it's a place with far less economic opportunity. Even though this is arguably one of the wealthiest human antipodes, there is still quite a bit of disparity and economic hardship for its inhabitants. Resetting to find one of the most geographically different and economically most unequal antipodes. The Hawaiian Islands, Antipode, Botswana. Eight major islands, several atolls, holding an estimated 1.4 million people. Notably, there is a higher percentage of Asian Americans in Hawaii than any other state. English is the dominant language, as it is elsewhere in the United States. But other than English, there is a large amount of Tagalog and Ilocano being spoken among the ethnic Filipinos who make up majority of the Asian Hawaiians. Reliable data may not exist for religion, but it seems that it probably does not play a major role in people's lives there, with less than half of its inhabitants affiliating with any religion. Per capita, personal income in Hawaii is $57,450, and even a basic minimum income is $23,000. Also, the life expectancy is 81.3 years. This makes the average life expectancy for a Hawaiian 
the longest in the country. In fact, Hawaii is considered one of the healthiest states in the US. Only 19% of Hawaiians suffer from obesity, only about 17% of them smoke, and additionally, they have the lowest rates of depression in the US. But while the wages are good and life is healthy, the cost of living is quite high, and this has caused a serious problem with homelessness and drugs to emerge. The sad results can be seen daily in the number of people living on city streets, under bridges, or in their cars. Though these problems seem rather less significant when compared to its antipode. Leaving Hawaii, it would take some 19,785 kilometers to arrive in central Botswana. Country completely landlocked, dominated by a sand-filled basin, the Kalahari Desert is dedicated to conserving a huge variety of wildlife, allowing Botswana to turn to safari-based tourism for income. With a current population of some 2,360,000, most identify themselves as of Tswana origin and the rest as Kalanga. Foreign settlers in the area consist of South African or European descent. The national language is Tswana, which is widely spoken, but the official language is English, which is the main medium used in schools and other official media. When it comes to religion, Botswana is predominantly Christian. Apart from being known for the vast savanna grassland, characteristic of the African animal kingdom, Botswana is also known to be one of the world's largest producers of diamonds has lifted its economy up from being one of the poorest in Africa to becoming one of the most stable democratic countries on the continent. One of the major concerns that Botswana has is the fight against the HIV AIDS virus. It is estimated that about 360,000 people have the disease. Botswana was the first country in Africa to offer free HIV drugs to its citizens. Today the country has one of the most sophisticated treatments for the disease with medicines readily available. Since its independence in 1966, Botswana has steadily risen through the ranks and has become a stable upper middle income country. The efforts to reducing poverty has slowly shown its success with the percentage of people living below the poverty line decreasing. For those who are not amongst the poverty stricken, the average income per month per person is 6,400 Botswanese pull up. The average life expectancy is just 66.5 years with HIV and AIDS being the leading cause of reduced life expectancy. This is quite unusual seeing as heart disease is the leading cause of death in the world. The challenge of survival in Central Africa really becomes apparent when juxtaposed with its antipode. The southern and northernmost inhabited antipodes, where nature is a lot less forgiving and a lot more prevalent in people's lives. Antipodal, the Straits of Magellan in Chile, is the oldest and deepest freshwater lake in the world, Lake Baikal. It is located in the southeastern part of Siberia, Russia, with a close proximity to neighboring Mongolia, with a depth of 1,623 meters. Lake Baikal holds 23,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water, that's one-fifth of all the fresh water on the Earth's surface, making it the largest freshwater lake in the world by volume. It is also the oldest freshwater lake in the world, having existed 20 to 25 million years to date. It is only natural then that the local life in Lake Baikal area revolves around the lake's resources, with fisheries as the main industry, mining of mica and marble, and timber from the lush taiga surrounding. The lake's location in southeastern part of Siberia characterizes the surrounding towns as typically Russian in ethnic character. But there's also a large presence of Buryats, a major indigenous group known to take refuge here, characterized as nomadic pastoral people from Mongolia. Before the Soviets took over Siberia, many of the ethnic groups in the area had their own traditional beliefs. Popular examples are shamanism and Buddhism, with remnants of these beliefs still seen in the area. However, in time, most residents have adapted to nominal Christianity as their religious affiliation. The official language in the region, as well as the rest of the country, is Russian and is widely spoken. But there are 35 other official languages and more than 100 others that are spoken but aren't officially recognized. An average monthly income for a person living in Siberia is likely as low as 27,000 rubles, which is just some $360. Life expectancy is likely around 70 years, but official figures for the region 
are hard to come by and the average in Russia is about 72 years. In addition to low incomes and a life expectancy slightly lower than Russian average, the biggest challenge for the inhabitants of Lake Baikal is managing the environmental damage of large-scale tourism. The incredible biodiversity is showing signs of damage and earning an honest wage fishing is becoming more and more difficult to attain. As we flip to the opposite side of the Earth's hydrosphere, we get to know the Magellan Straits, shared between Chile and Argentina, a channel at the tip of South America, linking the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. It is around 560 kilometers long and 3 to 32 kilometers wide at its narrowest and widest points respectively. The straits were also considered perilous for ships to navigate because of the narrowness of the passage and quite unpredictable climate. The Magdalena Channel is one common navigational route which connects with the Cockburn Channel and ultimately serves as one route that links the two oceans. Before Magellan's discovery in 1520, the surrounding lands along the strait were already inhabited by indigenous tribes. Today, Punta Arenas is the main urban center along the strait. The strait itself is still used today as a maritime route for huge vessels from all over the world, like cargo, large cruise ships, and tankers to cross between the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. The majority of the strait belongs to Chile in its southern region. Majority of the residents are white and non-indigenous. The religious affiliation in the area is mostly Catholic, with some evangelical Christians. Spanish is the official and widely spoken language in the region, and interestingly, there's a small contingent of Welsh speakers. A typical salary for someone living in Chile is around 9 million Chilean pesos, which is about $12,000, whereas a median salary would be closer to $27,000, and the life expectancy is about 79 and a half years, a good chunk longer than anywhere in Russia, especially its antipodes in Siberia. People living in this antipode are likely to be significantly wealthier and healthier than their opposites. But environmentally, it is important to note that the residents in the Lake Baikal region are a lot more protective of their natural habitat, as both locations have to protect their environments for the future prosperity of their respective regions. So far, all the antipodes we have visited are dominated by Christian values, and have had that as a common virtue. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, antipode to Lima, Peru. Phnom Penh is the capital and most populous city in Cambodia. It has grown to become the nation's economic, industrial and cultural center. It is home to more than 2 million people. 95.3% of the population are Khmer and 4% Chams. This also means that 90% of the people are Buddhist. They mostly speak the Khmer language, English and French being used by less than 10% of its inhabitants. For those who are lucky enough to be securely employed and living there, their gross average salary is about 96 million real. In reality, the average local likely enjoys an annual income of no more than $7,000 or 29 million Cambodian real. Phnom Penh is rapidly modernizing and a growing city that offers a cheap labor force to foreign firms, and as such, it is a city with major wealth inequality issues. Though the city itself is culturally rich and filled with beautiful temples and artifacts brought there by religious tradition and colonial France. According to official reports, coronavirus never got a real foothold in the country or the city with early restrictions on travel having been implemented to stop it. Nineteen thousand eight hundred and three kilometers away is its antipode city, Lima, Peru is the capital and the largest city in the country. It is also the seventh largest city in Americas, with a population of around 9 million people. 82% is made up of Aboriginal descendants, and the remainder coming from Spain and Europe. Spanish is spoken by 84% of Peruvian population, making it by far the most widely spoken language. It is also the main language of the Peruvian government, the media and the education system. However, you are still likely to hear English and other European languages being spoken in the tourist districts of the city. More than four-fifths of Peruvians are Roman Catholics, Protestants or other Christians, with non-Christian religions making up 10% or less, a very striking difference from its antipode. The income of an average Peruvian worker is about $500 per month, or 1,790 Peru souls, which adds up to little more than $6,000 a year. Poverty has been reduced massively since early 2000s and keeps dropping, but similar to its antipode, there is a shocking amount of extreme poverty. 
The situation is exacerbated by a massively inefficient and a famously corrupt government. Peru is also a hotspot for COVID-19, which has been wreaking havoc all over the country. And Peru is easily the most damaged country in Latin America, and possibly the world. Official data maintains that roughly 28,000 people died in the country, but some estimate that there could have been over 50,000 casualties. But it's not all bad. In reality, the people living in Peru and Lima are likely to live 9.1 years longer than their counterparts in Cambodia, with far better access to healthcare. And that's considering that the average Peruvian is five times more likely to be overweight than a Cambodian. Peruvians are also 77% more likely to have access to the internet, and far more Peruvians today are literate. Both countries have massive poverty issues, but Peru actually has a higher proportion of people living below the poverty line. Culturally speaking, this antipode is intensely different, while exhibiting similar problems in having a large, impoverished population. The most amazing antipod in my opinion is Hawaii and Botswana. They're opposite in almost every single way. One is a landlocked country and the other is an island country. One is a rich country, the other is a poor country. One is predominantly black, the other is predominantly white. An alien might not realize that two places are from the same planet. Tell me what other antipods you find extremely interesting and I might create a video out of it. I have more things planned and new videos are gonna come, so please subscribe and ring the bell button so you're notified when I make my next video. And I'll see you in the next video. Geo Perspective, out.